Hey everybody and welcome to another quick edit. So today I'm going to show you how you can take a picture just like this one right here and how you can turn it into a photo like this at the end in no more than 5 minutes. The Lightroom and Photoshop keyboards from Editor's Keys have the shortcuts printed on the keys themselves to help you with faster editing. Check them out at the link in the video description below. I'm gonna start off here by bringing up the shadows by quite a bit just to lift off everything that is dark and also bring down the highlights to have all of this cloud detail. Also I want to bring up the contrast by around 20, not too much at all and maybe even bring up the blacks for more shadow details. Now whites are amazing to add dynamic and just interest in your picture, so around 40 here works really well. And overall, I think I'm just gonna make the color a bit more bluish, bring up the vibrance a tiny bit and actually go into the minus clarity because there are so many textures and clarity really brings out these textures. So going into minus for the global clarity really works a lot better than going to the plus. Another thing that I really love here is that I can just grab a graduated filter and drag it over the foreground to increase the whites. And if that's still not enough, I can right click duplicate, right click duplicate, maybe even add some more contrast. And that looks very, very close to how I want it. So I'm gonna go down right away into the split toning, into the highlights right here. If you just click on this little box, you will get a color palette and that will allow you to add colors in just the highlights. So I'm gonna definitely add kind of a warm tone, something like this, and maybe just about 20, 25 saturation. Going into the shadows though, I want to add some blues as a differentiation, as a contrast to the warm tones. And let me just figure out which tone exactly. I think, yeah, kind of a purplish tone slightly even and really just add a hint like 8 or 10% saturation. So years before the split toning, years after, might not have a huge difference, but especially in the sky, you can see it changes the warmth a lot while not really affecting the foreground so much. Now going back up here, I do want to go into the point curve and just see if I want to add something that is kind of a very medium and very structured contrast, but it really doesn't work here. So instead, I'm just going to go into the sliders, bring up the highlights a bit, maybe, yeah, maybe bring up the lights as well. And in terms of the foreground, I think I'm actually going to bring up the darks and bring down the shadows and the shadows in the tonal curve will just bring down the very, very dark shadows. So that allows me to get some contrast while overall still having a rather very bright foreground. Now what I really want to do is, of course, a lot of local adjustments, but before that I want to go into the HSL tool, grab this little pinpointer right next to the hue and actually fine tune the hue of these green tones because it's a very weird color and it was really weird there. So I just kind of want to make it look a bit more natural, maybe a bit less extremely green and just kind of blend in more with these tones in the background as well. And doing the same thing with the saturation, so just grabbing this little pinpointer and seeing how much saturation of the respective color I actually want in there. I really, really love the HSL tool for all of the fine tuning stuff. All right, so going down here now, there's a lot of things about the details and stuff like that, but I just want to add a little bit of vignetting, definitely bring the midpoint more towards the center and make it a bit softer. Vignetting can really help you to draw your viewer's eye into the picture and also kind of add atmosphere and mood. Then going back up, I really think, you know, there's a lot of other stuff, but I'm just going to go right away into the local adjustment. And first of all, I really love to start off with graduated filters. So first thing I'm going to do is just grab a very, very dark filter over the foreground like this because, okay, so as you can see, the foreground is nice and bright overall, but I just want this very bottom part to be quite a bit darker because there's just so much in the foreground that it would be a bit too much if everything is just equally bright. And that also adds dynamic and again, interest. So doing even the same thing with a smaller filter over the bottom right and really closing out the picture. I think that's pretty good in terms of the graduated filters. I'm going to add a very big one with a very soft feather. 
with just a little bit of plus exposure over the top right part and actually just the top right half and then add one in parallel over the other side but this time with minus exposure and that allows you to have one side a bit brighter than the other and just add so much dynamic that way. As you can see, I kind of go a little bit further than I would usually do, but here it really works so well and might as well even grab another graduated filter, a little bit of a small one, but even add more minus exposure there. Now, I'm still not done with the graduated filters because I absolutely love them. By the way, you can hold down the shift key and I will give you a perfectly straight filter. I wanna go a bit into the minus exposure actually just for the top bring up the shadows so at least the dark shadows aren't quite as dark and you know not as stormy but still just have the overall exposure a bit darker and also what I wanted to do is grab graduated filter this time not for any exposure but just for a bit of warm tones over the top right just like this again never go too far always make sure it still looks somewhat natural and then even duplicate that and add a slightly different color over here yeah kind of more into red tones i guess but really not that much saturation at all in this one and kind of angle it correctly while also going back to the other one and just kind of fine-tuning everything you know you really have to fine-tune quite a lot of things because that's also the great thing about lightroom you can just go back to an adjustment change some things and see how it looks at the end now at the same time i'm gonna add another graduated filter over the left side and my goal is okay so you can see here it's kind of warm getting neutral getting blue 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 so i kind of want to have a differentiation from warm tones to the blue tones but at the same time i do want to have some differentiation in the blue tones and namely make the left part a little bit more dark bluish just like this maybe also adjust the saturation just a tiny bit and add even another filter with again a very soft edge just with a different angle and add kind of a different blue tone maybe more towards the actual purples just like that and really get some color in this entire photo maybe a little bit more magenta in the tint as well and i actually think that looks really really good you know what i could even add more saturation in the actual purple so that looks pretty good overall though i think i'm just gonna add a very last graduated filter over the sky just with a little bit of minus uh, saturation so it's not quite as over the top with everything with the tint here and maybe just make it a hint warmer yeah just something like that so it's not crazy punchy over the top saturated now just to show you real quick before the graduated filters and after as you can see a huge difference however i do want to do a last thing to this picture which is dodge and burning and dodge and burning is making individual parts either darker or brighter in a very local area and i love to use the rail filter for that so you want to make sure you invert the mask so the actual effect is within the filter and not outside and also you want to bring the feather to 100 because if you don't do that it will be kind of harsh and not really blend in with the rest of the picture so going into the plus exposure first you really want to be careful not to go over the top here and i love to mix that with a little bit of plus whites and plus contrast as well as some plus warm tones to add you know just make the lighting actually look natural then right click and duplicate and just drag some filters over these areas don't be afraid to also stack them on top of each other if it's really useful and it works always keep it at least somewhat looking natural because you don't just want to go over super you know super much exposure somewhere because that looks just terrible but if you do it smartly and you don't do it too much then you can add so much dynamic with the dodge and burning and I, I, I like dodge and burning is a thing that you can really spend tens of minutes on because you could even zoom in and do some more fine tune adjustments but what i'm gonna do here is actually switch into the minus exposure with some other filters and plus contrast minus blacks now the reason i'm doing that is so i can go over some of these star parts that are supposed to be in shadow and just kind of exaggerate that because if you have everything just bright it doesn't really work it needs at least some amount of contrast and adding minus exposure with these filters over just some spots is a super unique contrast that you will not be able to get in any other way so going further here adding some more 
and I think that looks actually really good, maybe just a little bit too much over there, and yeah, I think I'm gonna call it quits in terms of the dodge and burning, again, there's so much more that you could actually do, and uh, I'm just making sure that everything looks natural, it's not over the top, but yeah, I'm just gonna call it quits in terms of the dodge and burning here, here's before any, here's after, and you can just see how much better that looks, how much more dynamic, and maybe it's a little bit over the top if you see the direct comparison from before and after, but once you look at it for a while, you will really, you know, it will just look natural and just so much better than before. So I know I said this was gonna be a five minute edit, but I do maybe even wanna take another minute because there is a little bit of color differentiation needed in the foreground as well. So as you can see right now, everything is kind of warm. So I just wanna bring a filter, a rail filter with a slightly cooler color temperature and also a slightly different tint over the foreground here. Not really too much affected at all. You know, really just getting some differentiation, a word that I've probably said 10 times already, but there is so much to, you can do. And while I'm at it, I might as well also go over the top right of the sky here with another graduated filter, make it just a little bit less warm because it was a bit over the top before. And again, just look how at your picture, see how it looks and then adjust according to that. And as a very last thing, I'm just gonna go down here into the lens corrections and just remove that really annoying and ugly chromatic aberration or the purple and green fringing on the high contrast edges. And with that said, I really think I'm done here and you know, going into the history from the start, this is the raw file and I mean, it looks completely different, so much darker and also the sky is kind of too bright, so I really equilibrated out everything. And yeah, keep in mind you could crop this, you could do all sorts of things, perhaps it would even work better as a crop. Yeah, I, I think I like it better as a crop and then just add some more minus exposure, really just one filter over the bottom like this. And you know, again, this is a quick edit, you can fine tune and do so much more if you wanna spend the time. But I wanna take another moment to talk about the keyboards from Editor's Keys, mainly the Lightroom and the Photoshop one, as you can see there. Now they're backlit, this one is actually the Lightroom keyboard, but I especially found the, the Photoshop keyboards useful because I don't use Photoshop that much, I'm not that familiar with the keyboard shortcuts and it really allows you to yeah to just make your whole workflow a bit faster because as you can see they have the actual shortcuts of the respective program printed on the keyboard itself so if you don't want to remember like 50 shortcuts that's a really nice really nice little cheat to help you do everything a little bit faster but they also have like InDesign, Final Cut, Premiere, all sorts of different keyboards and I think it's definitely worth to take a look at and check out the link to a website will be in the video description down below so yeah you can just browse there and check it out if you want other than that i want to thank you very much for watching let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more long or perhaps more short videos like this and i'll do my best to do so take care guys